Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about ecological levels of organization. So in this video notes, there will be a guided set of notes where we're going to go through each of these ecological levels. But the whole point of this is to talk about when we think of a big ecosystem, we can talk about small things like an organism all the way to the whole planet biosphere. The biggest things encompass the smallest things too, which is why we have these visuals like these circles that are all on top of each other. All right, and your note should look like this, but cut in half a little bit. So let's begin. We're going to talk about the individual organism. In your notes, you're either going to be writing the definition or the example for whatever one we're talking about. So an individual organism is exactly what it sounds like. It's just that initial living thing. So here, here's an example, one deer. All right. Now, the next term is a little bit more complicated. It's a population. And a population would be then many deer, as an example. And it has to be a group of the organism of the same species. So they ought to be the same exact type of deer living in the same area at the same time. And they all have to be able to make babies together or interbreed. That part about same area, same time, same species so that they can make babies or interbreed, those are all very important aspects. If you think that coloring those in a different color will help, great. It's also a great idea to color the key words in a different color as well. All right, let's keep going. What's bigger than a population? Well, the next thing bigger than a population is multiple populations in the same area at the same time. That phrase is called a community. So now on top of having this type of deer, which is probably a, a, a weird type of deer that lives in the grasslands, we also have um, zebra. All right, so we might have these kadu deer and we might have these zebras and we also could talk about the grass or moss living here. All these living populations in the same area at the same time, they're a community. What's bigger than a community? Because this is all the living stuff combined multiple types of populations. Well, now that we have all the living stuff, now let's include the non-living things. Back to the beginning of our year, we could also include the words biotic and abiotic. So an ecosystem has both of them, biotic and abiotic things. Now when we think about our example, we need to note that it would be many deer, many wildebeest. Those are the biotic thing. We would have soil, rocks, water. Those are abiotic things. But this is the first level now that we're including abiotic things, non-living things. But they're on our planet too, so eventually as we zoom out and out and out, we have to start including the non-living things too. As we zoom out even further, we can think about ecosystems that are a lot alike. Those are called biomes. Specifically, there are large groups of ecosystems that share certain characteristics. Maybe they have the same amount of rain, such as the desert, very little rain, same type of temperature in the de all deserts, very hot, very sunny. So all of them deserts, no matter if they're in the US or if they're in the Middle East or if they're in um, other places like in Australia, they're all gonna have similar characteristics. Same thing with a temperate force or a rain force. All similar characteristics, but they, no matter where they are on the planet, they have to have those abiotic things that are the same. And because the abiotic things that are the same, we might even see some biotic things that are the same. What's even bigger than all the types of deserts? Well, at that point we've zoomed out. So far we're thinking about the whole planet, which is amazing. So. This whole process was thinking about going from very tiny to very big and being able to have certain words for that. So again, we talked all the way from the individual organism all the way back out to the biosphere, and we talked about all the words in between. Hopefully, if you need to, you can go back. I hope you got definitions and examples for each of these, and we will practice together as always. See you next time.